Welcome back to Teach English Now. The moment has finally come to make our first trip back in time. Today we are going to examine an approach called the Grammar Translation Approach. This approach was widely used in the United States and Europe by teachers of Greek and Latin, as well as many other languages. I'm setting our time machine to 1880. Are you buckled in? Well then, let's go. What is this? Who are you? Impertinence! There was no knock from my door. No sense of courtesy. How dare you come barging in here unannounced? And what do I see here? Women in my classroom. Highly unusual, no doubt. Highly unusual. What, what was that you say? Time travelers? Oh, I see. Oh. Hmm, six questions, and you promise to leave. That is a promise. I certainly expect those who enter my doors to live up to their promises. All right, we will see if the morality of the future is something I can trust or not. I will answer your six questions if you promise to leave me in peace. Fine. Which young man would like to ask me a question first? Well, isn't it obvious? We should teach language and, in fact, all disciplines. Art, science, mathematics, in an effort to help people become more cultured. The grand end of education is moral thinking. We should make sure young people understand great art and literature, such as that found in Latin and Greek. We stand on the shoulders of giants. How can students truly appreciate the great books of literature if they do not learn their Latin? Hmm. Students must be taught how to be moral individuals, and we must teach them how to speak correctly. If they cannot speak correctly and understand the rules of language, they will be just like immoral people you find in the streets who are ignorant cannot even read the Bible. Poor shame. Ah, simple question. We should teach young men from rich families who can afford the best scholars. <laughs> I'm not cheap, you know. <laughs> hmm. A teacher needs books, the best books. Certainly Homer, Cicero, Aristotle, Plato, and the Old and New Testament, Latin, Greek, Aramaic. These are the languages that matter. Young men learn languages by studying the great books in the original language. They learn by engaging in a text and poring over it, since those texts contain the keys of understanding within them. Learners also obtain an understanding of language through disciplined attempt and a systematic and ambitious amount of instruction. I may be old, but I'm no softy. <laughs> By giving students large chapters to translate every night, I will give them an entire chapter in the original Greek. Then I will have them translate the student's native language and then I will have the learner translate back into the original language. Then I will also ask questions to test their comprehension, so that I am certain that my students are paying attention to the themes found within the literature. I will also give a small list of verbs, oh, I don't know, perhaps 500. They must continue to read the books again and again. It is their dedicated effort that makes the difference. Their essays will certainly reflect that they have indeed learned each work I want them to know. 